may be trouble ahead But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music and dance Before the fiddlers have fled Before they ask us to pay the bill And while we still have got the chance Let's face the music and dance Soon we'll be without the moon Humming a different tune And then there may be teardrops to shed So while there's moonlight and music And love and romance Let's face the music and dance without the moon humming a different tune and then there may be teardrops to shed so while there's moonlight and music and love and romance let's face the music and dance dance let's face the music why not face the music I was born in a trunk in the Princess Theater. Actually, no. I was born at St. Luke's Hospital, and I was raised in a little white house. When I was a kid and I drew pictures of that little house, I just drew a white square with a little black triangle on top. And I seriously wanted to be like my friends who drew rectangles with rhomboids. My parents laughed because I was embarrassed by the little hip roof that I thought so unhip. But now whenever I see a hip roof, I long for the little white house of my beginnings. And I lived there with four adults my parents, Dick and Joan, they were true loves. And my older, much older brother and sister. I was a third child. In fact, I still am a third child. And in stories, a world that I inhabit often of folk tales, the third child is featured in many, many stories, as you may know. I was like an electron in an outer valence. By the laws of physics, I longed to be with the center, the nucleus of that family. But I was fated also to circle the outside fastened to that center. It wasn't so lonely, however, because others, you could say, more or less lived with us. And among them were Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland. Al Jolson. All the time we heard this music in the house. My sister would listen day in, day out to the entire score of West Side Story. So you might say Leonard Bernstein lived there. Lucky us. And my brother, who is a drummer to this very day, a jazz drummer, brought home everything from the Beach Boys to Bach. So this was the music that glued us together. And my favorite is Barbara Streisand, who helped my mother to clean house every day. But in that house of adults, I often couldn't sleep. So a very early insomniac, I would take the Book of Knowledge. Do you remember the Book of Knowledge? I'd take that off the shelf. And I'd open that red embossed cover, and inside I would see the lush watercolor illustration of two very Leave It to Beaverish kids inside. And as you may recall, they were standing on the back of the Book of Knowledge, sailing as if it were their raft into an exotic harbor with pagodas and rocket ships. 
a Taj Mahal, I thought, maybe the Eiffel Tower. And I longed to see faraway places. But meanwhile, I read the fairy tales in those books. I read Little One Eye, Little Two Eyes, Little Three Eyes. Isn't that a strange, strange title? I read Jack and the Beanstalk. Have you read Jack and the Beanstalk? I bet it's living in the library right now. And so many other stories. And days, I would love to go out into the woods because in school I was very, very shy and very withheld. But in the woods, I was wild and I was very, very free. So I'd be there with my friends and I would dream the fairy tales at night. But in those beautiful woods, I would imagine many other things. In the woods, I could be Robin Hood. I could be Maid Marian. Marianne escaped to Sherwood every chance she got to rally with the men in Lincoln Green. Nottingham was rotten, and she was simply not the kind of fancy waiting on the queen. She'd saddle up her mare and ride like the wind, feel the mist of Sherwood burn against her skin, longing for the day when Richard ruled again, and Robin could ride free beneath the sky. Marianne would wonder why women learn to smile and curtsy and pretend to be afraid. She wanted bows and arrows and lessons with a sword. She hated every time they called her maid. She'd fasten up her skirts to practice her skills, mastering her courage, strengthening her will. She would fight beside him. She would even kill. So Robin could ride free beneath the sky. Richard got his ransom paid and came to claim his throne. Robin got a title and a state. He married Lady Marian with the blessings of the crown, then rode away on Richard's last crusade. And Marian would pace the gray castle halls, staring at the tapestry she'd hung upon the walls, knowing she was saddled with a lady while Robin could ride free beneath the sky. And oh, how she yearned to gallop through the night and carry desperate warnings and take chances with her life and see her outlaw spirit in the mirror of his eyes and once again ride free beneath the sky. Well, I did dream in those woods, and it was wonderful. I remember the scent of pines and picking cowslips in a fever till my shoe got stuck in the mud one day. I'd be there with my friends. And when I came back from school, my mother worked what I call the daily miracle. She asked, how was your day? How was your day? It was a miracle because Nobody ever did this for her. During the Depression, 
my mom and her brother Bill were sent to two separate families. Bill fared very well. He went to a family in upstate New York who all but adopted him and loved him very much. My mother went to a separate family in Pittsfield, Mass. And for eight years, she pretty much raised herself. She slept on the couch in the living room and was called the little house guest. And I was amazed to hear in my adult years that after my mother left, no one ever even came back to say goodbye to her. The connection was nil. So how was your day? That was a miracle. She'd hear my stories from the day all right, but one day I remember my mother's face was very dark and serious when I came home. She sat me down within an arm's reach of some Rice Krispies treats with a chocolate frosting on it. She said, Mary Jo, you've been gaining weight. Sad is the girl, Mary Jo, who is not invited to dances. Sorry, the girl who goes unkissed. She gave me a little calorie counting book, showed me how to use it, and she set me off on a lifetime's adventure of various versions of myself, some thicker, some thinner. But one day in school, I realized my mother had also set me on another course, and that was for a longing to be touched. I was in the cafeteria, and Frank, a boy I'd never given any notice to whatsoever, because quite frankly, Frank resembled an earthworm. But Frank's shoulder accidentally touched mine, and I felt this electric current. I could see the shape of lightning go right down my arm, and I knew I wanted more of that. I lay in a dream for a hundred years while the rest of the world rode past. Safe behind my wall a princess under glass Until I felt a trembling Sweet honey on my lips Fluttering me open Wakened by the wonder of a kiss Are you the one they promised would come for me one day Sweep me up behind you and carry me away Are you the fabled perfect prince the future they foretold he backed away I would not be so bold I am but an errant knight unworthy of your hand I was simply passing through this strange enchanted land and there you lay so prettily how could I did not mean to rouse you wantonly like this. I only stole a kiss. The morning mist was shimmering, all golden in the dawn. tipped his head and quickly he was gone he did not lie to comfort me nor stay for pity's sake he left me all alone alas but 
But at least it lasts awake. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those two songs are by Michelle Browerman, who will be appearing at the Barrington Stage on May 18th on that weekend. A wonderful composer who lives in California. It's so nice to be with you all. And I wanted to let you know the first part of the program uh, harkens to my storytelling life, which is a full-time thing. On the second part of the program, we're just going to do some good old tunes. So I hope you're enjoying yourself. One night, I watched a late movie. You know, remember how it used to be? You would watch a late movie, it would come on after the news, and suddenly you would have to watch it, because it wouldn't come back, right? So I stayed up and I watched my glorious black and white, and the movie was The Inn of the Sixth Happiness. Maybe you know it. With Ingrid Bergman in the missionary position in China. Ingrid Bergman played the part of a missionary, a real-life woman named Gladys Aylward, who had put pennies together. She had tried to be a missionary. She felt it was her true vocation, but the proper authorities said, no, 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 this isn't something you're suited for. So she just saved her money for a long time, and she took a train all the way across Russia to China. And there she became so much a fabric of her village, that she even convinced many people, they say, to stop the practice of foot binding in the outlying villages. Gladys and Ingrid. Well, by the end of the movie, Ingrid had taken some 100 orphan kids away from war across mountains to safety. And by the time I had watched that, my little 12-year-old, 13-year-old something heart was about to burst. I went upstairs all alone, and I knelt, as my good future ex-Catholic heart would like, by the side of my bed. I was wearing a little blue-flowered nightgown that my pretty older award-winning sister had brought back to me as a prize from one of her trips. And I cried. I didn't just cry, I sobbed. And I railed to the heavens, as the saying goes, I prayed with the fervency of a monk. And what I prayed was that I would have a life that would be helpful to people and meaningful to me. I felt even then that I had one life, and I didn't want to blow it if I possibly could. I didn't know what it would be. I knew that I loved words and I loved nature and being outside. Would I be a writer? So far off, who knew? So, of course, I told my mother, and she's always helpful. She was always listening, and she was thinking it was a good time for me to start thinking about getting gainfully employed soon. So, within a few years, my mother helped me on my first job serving mankind as a waitress at Dunkin' Donuts. Led down among Brazilians, coffee beans go by the billions, and they got to find those extra cups to fill. They got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You can't get cherry soda, cause they gotta fill that quota. And the way things are, I bet they never will. They got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. No tea, uh -uh, no tomato juice. You'll see, no potato juice. Cause the planet's down in Santa's ass and no. No, no, the politician's daughter was accused of drinking water and was fined a great big $50 bill. They got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You date a guy and find out later he smells just like a percolator. His cologne was made right on the grill. They could percolate the ocean in Brazil. And when your ham and eggs need savor, coffee ketchup gives them flavor. Coffee pickles way outsell the dill. They put coffee in their coffee in Brazil. 
No tea, uh -uh, no tomato juice. You'll see, no potato juice. Cause the planters down in Santa's all say no, no, no. So you'll add to the local color serving coffee with a cruller. Duck doesn't take a lot of skill. They've got an awful lot of coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Meanwhile, on Sundays, my grandmother would come for Sunday dinner. She was my mother's mother, and she was a La Noue. She was a French-Canadian extraction. Now, talk about people on the outer valence of the world. My grandmother and I understood each other, and we were friends. She had been a mill girl in North Adams. And even in her 70s, she would shed a tear, literally cry, because she had had to leave school at 14 and go work on shoes all day. But at the dinner table, she would bring little bits of French. Now, my father was Irish-American all the way. And this would annoy him, no end. She would say, donne-moi les pois, s'il vous plaît. Pass me the peas, please. But... It didn't matter to me because I loved hearing the language so much. And those few words of French really started me in a lifelong love of all things French. Now, a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to go to France with my husband to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary, which was wonderful. And we climbed Montmartre, which you may know is a big hill up to Sacré-Cœur, and to look at the artist painting at uh, Place du Tertre. Greg, my husband, found a spot at a restaurant called Moulin de la Galette. Moulin, like Moulin Rouge, uh, the windmill of the Galette, which are flat little wheat cakes, because as you may know, France, Paris, at the turn of the last century, was dotted with many different windmills. So he took us to this little restaurant, and we were outdoors in what used to be a cabaret spot there. And we heard played a song from uh, Moulin Rouge. It's an old song, and I'd like to sing this song to you in French. And uh, we'll don a little bit of something français, the traditional. Uh, Bab. You like Bab with the beret? <laughs> Ah, c'est fantastique, merveilleux. <laughs> He'll say it's today, all day, every day, won't you? <laughs> Quel fromage! You know, cheese is fromage. We have French friends who would gather, uh, actually, and every time they had a picture taken, uh, they would be instructed to say cheese, but they were all French, so they would say fromage. And all their pictures, so their families had pictures looking like <laughs> like this, merci. But in this, uh, this lovely little waltz, uh, the hero, scoot up here, the hero is speaking to a girl of the streets because it was a place of poverty there. And instead of seeing her skirt as jupon, which is full of holes, or, or her sickly expression, the hero in the song sees her as a princess, princesse de la rue, princess. And the moon, la lune, is illuminating her as if she is wearing a tiara, un diadème. He's transfixed by this girl and invites her into his broken heart, cœur brisé. But all the while in the Montmartre, although they are destitute and poor and miserable, the wings, the windmill wings, look over them and protect them. Georges, shall we? 
I would like help from the audience. Let me hear you, if you don't mind, because we are at a cabaret. Would you all say, la, 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 la? Let's hear that. Oh, très bien, fantastique. So towards the end of the song, you will hear la, 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 and I will invite you. Don't worry about the notes. Don't worry. You can even sing la, 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 la right over the last words. And if you are so inspired, please feel free to get up and waltz. La lune, troublème, pose un diadème sur tes cheveux roux. La lune, trop rousse, de gloire éclabousse, en jupant plein de trous. La lune trop pâle caresse l'opale de tes yeux blasés. Princesse de la rue, sois la bienvenue dans mon cœur brisé. The stairways up to la butte can make the wretched sigh. While windmill wings of the moulin shelter you and I. Ma petite mandigote, je sens ta note qui cherche ma main. Je sens ta poitrine et ta taille fine, j'oublie mon chagrin. Je sens sous tes lèvres une odeur de fièvre, de gosse m'a nourri. Et sous ta caresse, je sens une ivresse qui m'anéantit. Les escaliers de la butte sont doux, miséreux. Celle des moulins protège nos amoureux. Et voilà, quelle trotte, la lune qui flotte, la princesse aussi. La 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 la, mes Les escaliers de la pute sont doux, miséreux. Les ailes des moulins protègent nos amours. Merci beaucoup. Beaucoup. <laughs> you sounded wonderful. Oh, Tish, that's French. I love when people get that joke. I used to watch TV in the afternoons after school. Tish, that's French. Hmm, it was either the Adams family or something really campy like that. Let me move this back up. Well, in speaking with children for many, many years, for some 25 years, performing for children, and now spending so many days in schools and classrooms, get to use the performing arts with children to help them with their language skills. In short, we play. Isn't that a wonderful idea for children to play? So you hear a lot of things. And I'd like to share one song with you that's from Sondheim's Into the Woods. Careful the things you say, children will listen. Careful the things you do, children will see and learn. Children may not obey. 
children will listen children will look to you for which way to turn to learn what to be careful before you say you make wishes are children careful the path they take wishes come true not free careful the spell you cast not just on children Sometimes the spell may last Past what you can see And turn against you Careful the tale you tell That is the spell Children will step away children will glisten tamper with what is true and children will turn if just to be free careful before you say listen to me Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a wonderful thing. And what a wonderful thing for the Lakeville Arts Council and the library to do. Before we move on, may we have a giant round of applause for all the volunteers and the council and the library. They richly deserve this. I've traveled around for 25 years and met many arts councils, all well-meaning, and as my husband Greg has too. And I will tell you, when we are home and we talk about arts councils, this one rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Beautiful creativity. One day, I met a man on a train. I'd met some men on a train. Have you met some men on a train or some women on a train? I said, I'm not talking to any more strangers. All they do is talk my ear off, and then they get off, and they never pay any attention to me. And then he walked on. Well, it's a true story. We talked all the way from New Haven to New York City. And then when he got off that train, I thought, well, we sure did talk a lot. You never know. We might get married. We did. <laughs> and we know each other well. So here's a song for my darling Greg. I could write a book. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I never learned to spell, at least not well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I never learned to count great amount. 
But my busy mind is burning to use what learning I've got. I won't waste any time. I'll strike while the iron is hot. If they asked me, I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look. I could write a preface on how we met so the world would never forget. And the simple secret of the plot is just to tell them I love you a lot. Then the world discovers as our book ends how to make two lovers a friend. Shepherd and the simple secret of the plot is just to tell them I love you a lot. Then the world discovers as our book ends how to make two lovers, how to make two how to make two lovers of friends.
Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you got a little, take a little chance on love. Here I go again. I hear those trumpets blow again. All aglow again. Taking a chance on love. Here I slide again. About to take that ride again. Starry eyed again. Taking a chance on love. I thought the cards were a frame up. I never would try. But now I'm taking the game up, and the ace of hearts is high. Things are mending now. I see a rainbow bending now. We'll have a happy ending now. Taking a chance on love. The cards were a frame up I never would try But now I'm taking that game up And the ace of hearts is high Things are mending now I see a rainbow bending now We'll have a happy ending now Taking a chance, taking a chance Taking a chance, taking a chance on love. Thank you. Thank you. When an irresistible force such as you meets an old immovable object like me you can bet as sure as you live something's gotta give something's gotta give something's gotta give when an irresistible smile such as yours warms an old implacable heart such as mine don't say no because i insist Somewhere, somehow, someone's gonna be kissed. So on guard, who knows what fates have in store from their vast, mysterious skies. I'll try hard, ignoring those lips I adore. But how hard can anyone try? Fight, 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 fight it with all of our minds. Chances are some heavenly star-spangled night We'll find out as sure as we live Something's gotta give, something's gotta give, something's gotta Mysterious skies. I'll try hard ignoring those lips I adore. But how hard can anyone try? Fight, 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 fight it with all of our might. Chances are some heavenly star spangled night. We'll find out as sure as we live. Something's gotta give. Something's gotta give.
was spinning around in my brain like the bubbles in a glass of champagne you go to my head like a sip of sparkling burgundy brew and I find the very mention of you Like the kicker in a julep or two The thrill of the thought That you might give a thought to my plea Cast a spell over me. Still, I say to myself, get a hold of yourself. Can't you see that it never can be? You go to my head with a smile that makes my temperature rise like a summer with a thousand Julys you intoxicate my soul with your eyes though I'm certain that this heart of mine Hasn't a ghost of a chance in this crazy romance. You go to my head. You go to my head.
so much. It's just so much fun to be able to do this and that you've created this nightclub. It's great, isn't it? Barb? It looks so good. You guys look good. <laughs> and uh, we're going to close, but again, I, I sincerely mean what I say about Lakeville Arts Council and the library. Uh, Olivia Mello and I go back quite a bit quite a way and that kind of support to be able to ply our merry trade is very very precious to us so thank you for a wonderful evening and we're going to close with let's face the music a little bit of let's face the music you got that baby there oh good <laughs> There may be trouble ahead So while there's moonlight and music And love and romance Let's face the music And dance, dance Let's face the music Why not face the music Let's face the music Thank you everyone, Bob Shepherd, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you.